First of all, I want to congratulate uh, uh, the students who graduated this uh, uh, semester. That's really uh, great news for, for us all to know about this program and uh, the benefits and the outcome coming from, from this program. And I would like also to thank uh, 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 my brother Tabriz for my for this invitation and especially to be with uh, 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 my uh, previous and uh, also uh, uh, still uh, my uh, beloved people, uh, Dr. Suhail and Maulana Bilal here. I benefited a lot from his presentation today and also I'm looking forward to, uh, to benefit from uh, Dr. Suhail later, inshallah. So, uh, uh, so first of all, uh, I want to, to, to talk about uh, uh, one thing related to uh, what Maulana Bilal said and also uh, Sidi Tabriz said here about the power of tradition. So uh, Maulana Bilal said in the end about the, the philosophy of Hanafi school based on inherited tradition or the praxis of the best uh, generation. This is a very important point talking about the power of uh, tradition. And this power of tradition, we can witness it in the, the bio biographies of Hanafi Kutub al-Tabaqat when, uh, when they use this uh, very uh, technical, very important term, faqihun nafs. And faqihun nafs is, uh, is just a term to tell about how the, the, the faqih should have wisdom and uh, consistency and systematic uh, approach towards fuqah, to connect furu' with usul and to have one systematic approach uh, as a necklace, as a, 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 like has a harm, harmony towards uh, all furu' and usul. So this, uh, the power of tradition here is very important because there is no uh, any disconnection in the history of Hanafi school from the first moment uh, till now. So uh, the Hanafi school knows their authorities, their mutun, and Mu'tamad, Fatawi, and everything. There is a very uh, solid connection from the first moment uh, till now. So when we, re when, we, uh, when we study Hanafi school, we study uh, uh, fiqh and we study also their usul. And we need to be aware uh, when we study Hanafi school is not just about mutun. We need to uh, contextualize everything we're reading in Kutub uh, al-Tabaqat to read about the, the biographies and the uh, etiquette and the lives of these uh, uh, great scholars in the history of Islam. So to connect between what we are reading in Qutb al-Mutun and also between these biographies, bringing a great benefit and uh, build a very uh, solid knowledge uh, on uh, Muslim history. So uh, reading Hanifi school, we need to be aware about Mutun and about Qutb al-Tabaqat and also about the interpretive tools or methodolog methodological tools that you use in Hanafi uh, school. So my talk today is about Usul al-Qiyaz, the Hanafi approach to Hadith uh, criticism. So this will be explained later why I chose Usul al-Qiyaz. Uh, you will see later uh, how this, uh, uh, this term would be explained, inshallah. Uh, so here uh, we can see the, uh, a very uh, is a wide map of Hanifi school from the from the students of Abu Hanifa al Imam al Awam till the last point here uh, there, there is ongoing uh, a tree till our 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 modern day our uh, 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 contemporary time and but here I I uh, just like because is uh, I have a, a, a wider map but this uh, just a map to consider the most important figures the most important Hanafi scholar in the history of Islam and end with Al Finari and also Sadr al Sharia al Thani and start with the most important uh, uh, Abi Hanifa uh, student uh, disciples. Uh, Zufar Abu Yusuf, Muhammad bin Hassan al Shaybani, Al Hassan bin Ziyad al Lului, and Hamad bin Abi Hanifa. So uh, I think this would be, uh, I think, a good source, like for any student of uh, Hanifi school, 
uh, when he wants to study uh, uh, the fiqh uh, books and also usuli books because here there are many figures uh, bent some treaties on usul and some uh, bent some treaties on fiqh. But uh, the main uh, the main uh, route here we can witness it in the uh, in the blue color. Uh, through Muhammad bin Hassan al Shaybani, and then through two figures, Musa bin Musayr al Razi and Isa bin Aban, and then from them going to Abu Sa'id al Barda'i and Abu Khazim Abdul Hamid al Qadi al Qudat al Sham, and then from Abu Khazim to Abu Hassan al Kalhi, Abu Hassan al Kalhi to Abu Bakr al Jassas, and then uh, Abu Bakr al Jassas to Al Jurjani al Quduri, but also Abu Bakr al Jassas took from Abu Jafar. Al Ustur Al Roshani and Abu Jafar taking from uh, the uh, uh, this one green, I think. Uh, the green route is coming from a different route, also from Muhammad bin Hassan al Shaybani through Abu Hafs al Kabir, Abu Hafs al Sagir, Al Sabzumani, and then Abu Bakr Muhammad bin Fadl. So here with Abu Ja'far, both routes connected, and then becoming to Abu Zaid at Dubusi, uh, when uh, where we I, I, I want to focus on the the al-usul al-qiyas, and the the red one also coming from Ismail bin Hamad, and Ismail bin Hamad we can see he has three resources: Abu Yusuf, Al Hassan bin Ziyad, and Hamad bin Abi Hanifa. And Usmail Ahmed also uh, uh, the route going to Abu Sa'id al Bardai. So we can witness here very important figures al, uh, al Bardai, al Karhi, al Jassas, al Dubusi, and al Tahawi. These very important uh, uh, um, figures to, uh, to explain the, the uh, Hanafi approach toward Hadith as we see later, inshallah. <laughs> So, uh, so just talking about Ibn Aban, general view as just like we can see here, Ibn Aban, the, 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 the second generation after the disciples of uh, Abi Hanifa and Norman. And uh, from Isa Ibn Aban, we can see uh, the route going to Abu Khazim, Abdul Hamid, and then Abu Hawi, and also from Abu Khazim, Abdul Hamid to Abu Hassan al Karhi, and then al Jassas. This is a very important uh, route to understand what's going on in, in the book of Al Fusul fil Usul, the Abi Bakr al Jassas, and then what's going on in Kitab Ta'asis al Nadar in Abi Zaid al Dabusi. So that's why uh, studying Isa bin Aban is a very important uh, thing to understand the history of uh, Hanifi school on Hadith criticism. Uh, so as Isa bin Aban, uh, we don't see, we don't witness um, uh, any treaties uh, uh, like published uh, everything. Like he wrote, he wrote very important books. One of them, he uh, refuted, uh, he he wrote a refutation uh, of a Shafi on Akhbar al Ahad, and also uh, he wrote a book on al Hujaj al Kubra, al Hujaj al Sughra. Uh, so he's a, he's a very important figure in the history of Islam, especially in the discussion with Al Imam Al Shafi'i, and especially his old school, uh, and how Al Shafi'i, the, the impact of Isa bin Aban on Al Shafi'i, moving from the old school to the new school, from Al Mazhab Al Qadim to Al Mazhab Al Jadid. So uh, in uh, Ibn Aban's general view, uh, so uh, uh, we can witness in Abi Bakr Al Jassas uh, Al Fusul fil Usul, especially in this book. Uh, Al Jassas provided us with two viewpoints of Ibn Aban. The first one in this slide, and the second one in the coming slide. So we can see in Al Jassas, especially in the chapter on Al Akhbar, uh, Al Jassas said that Ibn Aban believes that uh, when we coming to establish uh, Haram or Hazar or to establish Ibaha or to establish Wujub. And especially, he, he I, I, there is an Arabic text later, just like to to uh, for people like reading Arabic, just to to practice uh, and to uh, to examine our knowledge of Arabic. You will see how these titles, how these uh, technical terms used in in Arabic. So uh, Ibn Aban here said, like when we use or when we want to establish any hazar or any ibah or any wujub. Uh, we need to be aware about five sources uh, other than Isnad. So Isnad, yes, there, there is an authority in Isnad, but also there are five important sources. The first one, Sunnah, in his uh, uh, 
uh, words as Sunnah as Thabita and the second one Quran in his word Quran لا يحتمل المعاني معاني تأويل لا يحتمل المعاني there is no room for probability and also public affairs الأمر العام or عموم البلوى if there is a hadith private hadith or special hadith uh, talking about a private issue or special issues but related to a public affairs عموم البلوى this hadith there is a doubt of this hadith and also praxis uh, praxis or uh, as a practice of the fair generation uh, what Maulana Bilal uh, talked uh, already. And here, if we see a hadith, uh, uh, also a hadith coming, but uh, it uh, uh, contradicts with the praxis of the fair generation, this hadith is considered shaz, and also reasoning, certainty. And this, uh, in, his, uh, in his words, mujibat ahkam al so that means certain reasoning. So this is the first uh, uh, approach of Ibn Abbas. The second approach, uh, this approach we can witness it in uh, in the in the Kitab al Fusuf al Usul, and also we can witness it in uh, Kutub al Mutaakhirin, uh, the, the the books of uh, late uh, Hanafi scholars, especially in Usul. So uh, in these uh, books, uh, especially in Al Manar, we can witness, or especially like let let us talk about just al al Fusuf al Usul, the Abi Bakr al Jassas. Abu Bakr al Jassas approached this towards three things. And once we need to, to understand Ibn Abban's stipulation, we need to be aware about the three major issues. The first, the first one, legal analogy, and the second one, narrations, Khabar Ahad, and narrators. So for narrators, Abu Bakr al Jassas said of Ibn, uh, uh, Ibn Abban uh, categorized the narrators into three uh, ranks. The first one, upright and faqi, this Adil faqi, and the second one, upright but not faqi. And the third one, unknown. So, and when we talk about narrators here, we don't talk about the successors or we talk about the second or third generation. We talk specifically about Sahaba. And just to give an example, the first rank here, like talking about Abdullah bin Mas'ud or Ali bin Abi Talib, Aisha bin, uh, Aisha bin Abi Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu anhum. Or as a second one, like talking about Anas bin Malik and Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. And the third one, talking about unknown Sahaba who narrated maybe one or two hadiths like Wabisa bin Ma'bad. And for narration here, we're talking specifically about Khabar al-Ahad, not talking about Khabar al-Mashhur as Sidi Bilal talked already, or Al-Mutawatir. We talk specifically about Khabar al-Ahad in Hanafi approach, not in uh, uh, the late approach of uh, Hadith scholars. And then when you talk about legal analogy, Al-Qiyas here, uh, uh, this is uh, based on uh, late understanding after Shams al-Imma al-Hulwani, after the mid of the fifth Islamic century. So uh, especially Al-Bazdawi and uh, Abu al-Hussein al-Basri and Al-Razi, all of these uh, figures presented uh, a complicated and sophisticated explanation of uh, legal reasoning and how we can understand the Hanafi uh, approach on, Han on, on Hadith criticism. And they said the Qiyas are four uh, types, the first one. So these four types divided in two texts or legal reasoning is Nas or Al-Illa. And both of them divided in two, certainty or probability. So when we talk, the, the exact contradiction in Ibn Aban uh, uh, methodology here, uh, when we have a, uh, a certain text, like text with uh, certainty, nas qat'i or nas uh, uh, like Al-Quran or Al-Mutawatir, uh, but reasoning here is uh, uh, there is a probability. And the probability here is uh, talking about illa, and then the narrator is upright but not faqih. So the narrator here is uh, uh, upright, but not faqih like Abu Huraira. So the contradiction happening here, exactly. So when we talk about Khabar al-Ahad, and I think text here is not like about Mutawatir, it's about uh, Khabar al-Ahad when we talk about the Dalala. Dalala al-Nas is, uh, uh, is uh, thabita wa qat'iya, but the reasoning is probability. Uh, so, here is just to practice your Arabic language reading these two uh, methodologies or two perspectives of Ibn Aban. The first one, let me read in uh, Arabic and then I move to English. The first one when I talk uh, here, this is the first theory and the second theory here. So this is Al-Ula. So, إِذَا عَرَضَ خَبَرُ الْوَاءَ الْرَاوِيَ الْعَدْلِ غَيْرِ الْفَقِيهِ كَابِهُ رَيْرَ مَثَلًا 
Uh, I'm sorry. So, okay. So the, the, this is the first one is the second one here. And this one, this uh, slide, you will see it in the first one here. So al ula is a Araba Khabar al Rawi al Adlu Gayru al Faki, Kabi Hurayra Mathal and Osul al Piyas, when Sadda Babu Tawil, Wakan al Khabar Yuasisuli Hazri ma Sabata Iba Hatu Hubil Osul, or Ijabi or Iba Hati ma Sabata Hazru Hubil Osul, Fal Khabar Hina is then Mardud. So here, as I said, so if uh, a report coming from uh, a narrator is upright but not faqih, like such as Abi Huraira, and this khabar contradict usul al-qiyas, and let us talk about usul al-qiyas. So usul al-qiyas, here is my, uh, my technical terms, uh, as we will see it in Dubusi, but in Abi Bakr al-Jassas book, just he said al-qiyas. So let us say al-qiyas here, not usul al-qiyas. And then the, when sadda babu ta'wil, and there is no room for harmonization. There is no room for interpretation. And the wakan al-khabar yu'assisu li hadr ma thabata ibahadu. And the khabar report establish uh, permissibility or impermissibility. Establish hadr uh, or establish ibaha or establish wujub. And then al-khabar hina is in mardud. Al-khabar would be rejected. The second one, the second theory, يرد خبر الواحد الوارد في إنشاء حضر أو إباحة same establishing حضر أو إباحة في حال معارضته للقرآن. If this خبر contradict Quran الذي لا يحتمل المعاني so the absolute text or the certain meaning of Quran or a Sunnah a Sabbath a fixed or non Sunnah and مجيبات أحكام العقول is uh, reasoning here as, uh, like reasoning with certainty and or كان خبرا خاص is a private or a special report but related to uh, pertaining to a public affair and la ta'rifu al-'am the mass uh, does not know this khabar this umum al-balwa or kana shadhan rawahu an-nas wa 'amilu bi khilafihi so the hadith narrated but the problem is the fair generation or maybe the, the fair generations uh, act against uh, it or oppose it uh, to it so then we can see these two uh, important theories by Isa bin Abban provided by Al Jassas in his book Al Fusul fil Usul. So the first one applied just to the second uh, rank of narrators who are upright but not faqih. But the second one applied for all narrators, uh, uh, including the first rank is Adil and Faqih, like Ibn Mas'ud. So then this one is a general view of this is, uh, uh, is just like um, we, can, uh, we can narrow the first one just like to fiqh and this one to abwab al deen So the second one to abwab al deen and the first one is for fiqh But however, also the second one, maybe some maybe argue if we speak about hazr or ibaha, then so that all both of them should be narrowed and just uh, 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 limited to fiqh, and I think this would be, uh, uh, I think, fair, uh, um, fair explanation for both uh, theories. So let us move to uh, this is uh, important uh, 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 information. So then, can we see one approach or more in the Hanafi history? So as we see here, Ibn Aban, as al Jassas uh, explained in his book, Al-Fusul fil Usul, uh, Ibn Aban raised the idea of Qiyas uh, opposing to Khabar al-Wahid. And then we can see with Al-Tahawi coming after one century after Ibn Aban, raised the idea Al-Asl al-Jami'a. So Al-Tahawi did not use Al-Asl al-Jami'a as a technical term. So but Al-Kawthari in his books, and especially on the biography on Al-Tahawi, he uses a very important technical term, Al-Asl al-Jami'a. Al-Asl al-Jami'a here is is we can understand Asl Jami as a nadair. So when we have uh, many rulings and all of these rulings uh, going to put one uh, legal maxim, this Al Asl Al Jami, then this Al Asl Al Jami would be a basis or would be a foundation to criticize other ahadith. So this Al Asl Al Jami becoming mutawatir, even though derived from uh, maybe a weak hadith, because this Al Asl Al Jami. Uh, coming from different and is uh, from a holistic uh, approach towards all furu'a. 
And then we uh, go just uh, uh, two decades uh, after the Tahawi to Al Karhi, Abu Al Hassan Al Karhi, from the same route uh, coming from Isa bin Aban. And then we can see he, he said two things uh, are, can, can be considered foundations and principles to criticize Hadith Al Quran and well known Sunnah, Al Sunnah Al Mashhura. And then uh, one century uh, after Al-Karhi al, al dubusi when he put a very important technical terms, he said usul al-qiyas, not just al-qiyas. So al-qiyas here, as we said, as we will see, the, the, the last approach is late mutaakhirun post uh, 450 uh, in the Islamic uh, calendar. And this Hanafis and non-Hanafis, we can see it in Bazdawi, and also we see it in Al-Basri, Al-Mu'tamad, and also Al-Wazi, Al-Mahsul. They said special qiyas, not any qiyas, a qiyas that uh, coming from, uh, uh, from a, a text, uh, a certain text, but has illa by istinbat, nai illa by nas. So the reasoning mentioned in the text, not by text, but by uh, istinbat, by fiqh. So then here there is probability of this qiyas. That's why uh, Hanafi school, especially here, and Ibn Aban here, uh, uh, give the priority for uh, uh, al-Qiyas over Khabar al-Ahad. So this a late understanding of al-Qiyas, but this coming from Hanafis and non-Hanafis, inside, in, uh, inside the school of Hanafi, we can see three, uh, three uh, uh, or maybe two, two uh, general theories explaining what's the meaning of Qiyas. One by al-Tahawi, he said al-Asl al-Jami' and then at Dubusi Usul al-Qiyas. So both are very, uh, very uh, close to each other, but al al Jami' connected to what we can see in the discipline of Al-Furuq and Al-Ashbah wal nadair But in Dubusi, mostly uh, we are going to, uh, to the field of uh, Al-Qawaid al-Shari'ya, not Al-Qawaid al-Fiqhiya. So mostly Al-Qawaid al-Shari'ya because when al dubusi mentioned that, and especially Shah Waliullah Dalawi, when he gave some examples, he gave examples like legal maxim, but based on prophetic reports, like Al-Kharaj bil daman Al-Ghurmu bil ghunum and all of these uh, uh, maxims that's coming from uh, a hadith and coming from prophetic reports, but there are some uh, uh, legal maxims also coming from uh, al al furu so here, uh, just to compare, it's a very important because I'm focusing right now in two approaches, Al-Hanafi uh, Hanafi and Mu'tazila. We can see here very important figures in the first Islamic centuries, uh, Ibn Aban in the second Islamic, uh, the, the second and the third Islamic century, Al-Karhi in the fourth Islamic centuries, and Al-Khayyat in the third Islamic centuries, Al-Jubbai fourth Islamic centuries, Al-Balkhi also fourth, Al-Jubbai, Abdul Jabbar in the fifth Islamic centuries. All of these, but some uh, stipulations to criticize hadith, and they said we isnad is not only one single uh, uh, foundation or one single evidence. Uh, with uh, uh, we can rely to uh, to verify a, a, any hadith. So we need to verify some hadith through uh, out uh, uh, the authority of uh, outside of the authority of isnad. So, but. Just to, uh, to, to, to highlight this very important things here, the domain, domain here of these schools. So in Ibn al-Karhi, just focusing on al-fiqh, but the fourth figures here, al-Mu'tazila, focusing on kalam. So the difference between Mu'tazila approach and Hanafi approach is a domain. So the domain of uh, Hanafi is fiqh, and the domain of Mu'tazila is uh, 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 Al-Kalam. And then with certainty, so Ibn Aban al karhi they, uh, they don't require certainty. Uh, um, um, and we can see Mu'tazila here, the certainty is very important. But the blue one, so we can see Ibn Aban, and especially how Ibn Aban uh, interpreted later by al dubusi it's very close to al balkhi al mutazili but Ibn Aban uh, talking about usul al-qiyas and then versus usul al-kalam. So usul al-qiyas versus usul al-kalam, this a late, uh, is not a late, but is coming like in the, in the uh, third and fourth Islamic centuries uh, to explain the, the tension is not just a qiyas or just about foundations in theology, but usul al-qiyas versus usul al-kalam. 
and both of them require reasoning and non-sunna and praxis of fair generation, Quran, and then public affairs. But uh, Al-Balkhi adds Al-Ijma and also adds al tawatur for uh, theological uh, issues and require certainty. So however, uh, uh, Ibn Aban specifically and different from others provided uh, uh, um, a, a very important uh, theory on the quality of narrators as we uh, saw previously uh, the Adil Faqih, Adil Ghair Faqih and Majhul, but others they did not uh, put this uh, uh, categorization, but uh, Ibn Aban put that just to say, okay, when I put Adil Faqih, that means uh, the Rawi, when he is Faqih, he understand what he is narrating. So then uh, he is Rawi Wa'i, he has Diraya, not just like Riwaya, he understands then the uh, ambiguity or the problem in his narration becoming very uh, uh, small, different from Rawi without Diraya or Rawi Adil not Faqih. So maybe he narrated some uh, reports but without understanding the content. So however, Khabar al-Wahid in belief, all of them uh, accept Khabar al-Wahid in belief uh, uh, and also, I'm sorry, uh, this Khabar al-Wahid in belief, uh, uh, just ignore that. I think there is a problem here. Uh, maybe I need to fix it, inshallah. So let me move to what al balkhi said in his book, Kitab Qabul al-Akhbar. He said, uh, very five resources to verify any text in, uh, in Islam. The first one, Kitabullah, and then Sunnah to Rasulullah, and then Ijma' al-Ummah, Amal al-Sadr al-Awwal, al-Aqal, and all of these uh, agree and same as Ibn Aban mentioned, except Al-Ijma'. But the difference between Ibn Aban and between Al-Balkhi uh, Al is uh, one talking about Usul Al-Qiyas and one talking about Usul uh, Al-Kalam. And here the, the, the technical term used by Al-Balkhi when he said, وَتَعْلَمُ أَيْضًا أَنَّ أُصُولَ الْكَلَامِ So then, in the, in, the fourth, uh, in the fourth and uh, fifth Islamic centuries, we can see a very obvious and clear uh, theory in Mu'tazila and Hanafi and both um, uh, um, these schools. So one talking about Usul al-Kalam and one talking about Usul al-Qiyas and that's everything for the presentation. And I'm sorry for, uh, I think I take, I took more than what I am given and please, uh, Azuruni, Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.